What's up everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six, I'm Rob. Doing the Springbank Local Barley 10 year old 2020. Okay, this was bottled December 2020, really close to 2021. It was distilled June 2010. This is the one that everybody was raving about, okay? Dark Oloroso sherry casks, fresh sherry according to Springbank terminology, all right? So, 8,500 bottles in this batch. Um, you guys know how I feel about the local barley series. I always felt like it was a little bit overpriced. They're usually super pale. That doesn't really tell you how good the quality of the whiskey is for that matter, but this one, they decided to go super dark like they did their 21 year old from 2020. Both excellent. I'm going to tell you why this one is excellent. I'm going to tell you how I feel about it. I'm going to tell you what, if it's worth the hype. Currently, whiskey base price is like 790 euro. All right, so it's absolutely absurd at this point. Uh, it actually just got dropped a little bit because it was over 800 euro about a week ago. So uh, I don't know what's happened. Maybe people are not going as crazy for the whiskey as they were just before. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm gonna nose this one, taste it, and give it a mark. Okay, so what I love about this whiskey is it smells like Springbank right away. But then you get something that you're not really used to because of recent Springbanks, other than that 21 year old I already alluded to. And it's this like heavy quality sherry cask note. It's like a raspberry jam with Springbank funk. And I just got a hit of like chocolate drizzled over that. And then like, I don't want to call it peat, but a musty like malty kind of note that you would get, that you would expect from a Springbank. Beautiful nose on this, honestly. I said 55.6%. I've yet to add water to it. Um, I feel like it's blasphemy almost. It doesn't need it on the palate. It's, it drinks very, very nicely. You don't, it doesn't have any heat to it or anything like that. But here we go. Okay, so jam-like sweetness up front. You get that Springbank funk, probably mid-palate. A nice like char note in there as well. I wonder to help get that color if they added a couple refill heavily charred casks or recharred casks to really bring up the color in this whiskey. I think a lot of distilleries are playing with that trick throughout the industry right now where they're charring a refill barrel to bring out extra color from the char notes, not necessarily the sherry cask, and then playing it off as a sherry trick. I think because of what I'm tasting here, it, it reminds me a little bit of the old, the first recharred sherry cask Kilcarran 8. Um, this is better in my opinion than that, which says a lot, but it reminds me of that kind of char note that you got on it. Jam like sweetness, springbank funk, charred oak, and then finish with more springbank funk and some nice like raspberry notes, um, a little bit of chocolate in there, some coffee. I love this stuff, honestly, I really do. I feel bad that there's so much hype around it and I wish they did much more than 8,500 bottles because then a lot of people would have got a chance to try this. My Patreons are gonna get a chance to try this, uh, especially those in the, the right tier. Um, probably a little spoiler alert there. Okay, so I, if you've been following this channel for some time, you remember the Lejeg uh, Valentin Mallet that I reviewed that I absolutely loved. Dark, uh, beautiful bottle, all these sorts of things. Um, 
Now, my thing with that whiskey was, I said it in the video, I've said it many times, it wasn't for the faint of heart. It's not the type of whiskey that you can just pour and play every single day. This whiskey is. This whiskey, if you're enjoying a little bit of peak these days, you're already ready for this whiskey. It's got the sweetness that the Sherry Cask Lover loves. It's got the ABV that all the whiskey geeks want. It's got the peat, not excessive of course, because it's Springbank, not long roll, but it's there. And then it's got the Springbank funk that Springbank fans are dying for. I hate that this is so good. Uh, I do feel bad that it's so good because the price of this bottle is absurd. And it, it almost like to the point where it hurt me to open this bottle. But what I did was as soon as I got it, I opened it. I didn't want to ask any questions. I, I just wanted to have the whiskey because I had tried it based on a sample and I knew that I needed an open bottle of this. So I don't know how many bottles of that 8,500 will ever be open. Maybe half, hopefully more. But if you were lucky enough to get a bottle of this and you are courageous enough to open it kudos to you and if you are planning on sitting on it well then you're a lucky guy because it's probably going to go up quite a bit because it is really good stuff gonna have to give this one a 91 possibly even a 92 i really really like this whiskey um, the retail on it wasn't too bad at all it was about 230 bucks a bunch of you know this the horror story that i had with getting one of these and it breaking in the mail. Uh, obviously, I had the help of a good friend named Peter White to source another bottle, and um, I purchased, so I was lucky enough to get two, actually. I purchased one from my buddy Mark at Liquor Lodge as well. So, um, definitely was able to open one and not feel any guilt towards that and enjoy these. That's it for me, guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and you can support this channel on Patreon. Cheers.